Well, today's Sunday. I'm just getting things kind of set up. I uh, threaded the cable in the aux locker housing, and I was checking the um, shifter fork, make sure it wasn't going to have any clearance issues once it's installed, and just looking at ways where I'm going to plan to route the cable to get it inside the cab. This weekend is one of my long weekends. Next weekend I get a super long weekend, like four days, but yesterday I just had a mental health day. It's way too cold to do anything. Like I've had the garage furnace on for like four hours and I came outside and like all my tools are still frozen and it's fucking cold in this garage still. Like it takes a long time. Like the ambient air temperature is warm, but everything to touch is still cold, so it won't be till tomorrow that you know, this cement floor has finally got all the coldness out of it and it's at least halfway warm. But today, this project's been taking way too fucking long. It's been pretty cold this winter and I hate working outside in the garage and it's cold laying on the cement floor and fuck, it's brutal. But I'm going to push it through to get through today. I want to get the differential in today, like in, like set up. So we're going to set the pinion up and uh, get that set up and then put the crush collar in our... Then put the crush sleeve in and torque that bitch down to what we need to do and fuck, I want to get that set up and the differential done so then I can start assembling everything else, but let's get to work. The garage floor is so cold, that's my little mini heater I got, so I have a little bit of warmth that I'm working underneath there. So I'm going to stick the pinion into the differential now. So one-handedly, I'll put the bearing on. And I'll put the oil slinger, and then I'll put the, we're not going to put the seal until after it's set up. And then I'm going to throw the yoke and the nut on, but I have to use both hands, so I'll be right back. So I got my yoke on, and I made this little device, so I'm tightening it up. I don't have to bother trying to hold that yoke, because you know that's going to be impossible. So I'm going to grab the impact gun now, and we're going to take all the wobble out of it, and then I'm going to tighten it by hand until I get the desired torque that we need. So for a used bearing, I gotta be between 10 and 20 inch pounds to move it. So that's some tension. It's about 10, 12, 14, 15. Starts to move right around 15 inch pounds. So that's exactly where I want it. So in case anybody's unsure where backlash is. The backlash is the movement between the gears. Right now there's an incredible amount of backlash, but if I push it up against the pinion, there's nothing. So now, I gotta take my dial, set it up, and then measure again. It's always good to do this a couple times, double check your measurements. You don't want to measure it once and go off of that and realize you're wrong. It'll cost you more in the long run. So do it two times, three times, as many times as you need that you feel confident enough to do the job. These bearings are pretty close too. I should be able to just heat these bearings up and put them on. Instead of using the press, I got the oven heating up 200 degrees, so we'll see. Got some bearings heated up. Let's see if we can get them on the differential. No, I'm going to have to press them on. It's fucking beer time. I've been in the garage for about six hours now, pissing around those gears. I got it kind of set up where I want it to be. I got the bearings pressed on. I'm gonna install the pinion, crush it, and then put the differential in. I'll probably have to make a few small adjustments on the shims with the old bearings and the new ones. I like the pattern I have now, so see what it's like when I have the real bearings in there, and then we'll go from there. Oh, Saturday night I went out. It felt like I hit fucking rock bottom. It was my friend Kim's birthday and her and her boyfriend and some other friends of hers decided that they wanted to go to the casino. So we were at the casino. All of a sudden we decided we're going to go play bingo. So I'm like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? So playing bingo is like feeling like you're rock bottom. Sitting in the bingo hall, people are smoking and people just look like white trash. Like fucking like trailer trash. I just felt so gross and grimy and just... Fucking, ugh. Felt like I should have been living in a trailer park, you know, eh? 
And my friend's boyfriend is so fucking lucky. Every time he goes to the casino, he always wins money. And he doesn't, like, keep on spending it till he loses it. He'll take out 100 bucks cash, and that's his limit. So if he blows that, it's gone. So last night he took out 100 bucks cash, went to the tables, roulette, played two hands. First hand he lost, the second hand he bet it all. Fucking took home 360 bucks, cashed out and left. So he was up 260 bucks. And like every time I see him, like he goes in the roulette, he plays either like the top six numbers or the bottom six numbers. And he usually always seems to like clean up on that. It's fucking, it's pretty good. I never bother playing those games. I suck at that shit and I just end up just throwing money away. I'd rather spend my money on other things. Besides, fuck who knows. If I get on a winning streak, I might get an addiction and spend all my money fucking gambling. That would just suck like all the other rest of the losers in there. So I ordered the rebuild kit for the transfer case and a new chain to go along with it. And the um, SYE, I think, whatever it is you call it. And a new drive shaft, I'm going to order that in a couple of months. Once I get the uh, transfer case out and rebuilt, I'll get all that shit measured up and ordered. And then I got shitload of editing to do. I don't even know where I am and how, or even how it's going to turn out. I'm just kind of filming stuff and just kind of working my way through it. And I got to try to figure out... How I'm going to set it together. I think the differential. I think the carrier videos are going to be split into three videos. The uh, carrier setup. The pinion setup. And then the final setup. Just so that people can kind of see what's going on. But we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to finish my beer. Go inside, eat, and fucking relax. Well, it's Monday. And let's get this carrier put in. And it's fucking colder than yesterday. My Beamer is usually a pretty good starter. Today she uh, struggled a little bit, so the garage furnace doesn't really want to seem to turn off. It's like minus 25 outside. It's fucking colder than fuck, so let's get to work. Okay, I'm just going to pre-lube the bearing here, dump some differential oil on her. And we're going to rub it in there. All right, now they got that lubed up. Very carefully put that in. Go grab my washer and new nut and red lock tight that. Put it into place. Well, I got this big beast dialed in for 140 foot pounds of torque, so let's start with that. So I finally got my pinion where I need it to be. I didn't show that on camera, but I'm going to show you how I did it. The uh, big massive torque wrench over there was no good because I needed too much leverage to make it click. And this is one of the times where having a hoist would come in handy because then you just be able to do it in seconds. And otherwise, you know. I'm fighting in a tight pack garage and it's fucking frustrating at times, but I'll show you what I did. When they say you gotta use like a snipe and stuff to tighten that pinion, they're not fucking joking. So I went through the control arm. That way when I went up, I had about a few inches. Otherwise, if you try to go from the bottom to the ground, it just doesn't work that way. And that brace I made works really good. And I just keep tightening it and then I kept tightening it. And then kept checking every so often, eh? Like I do like three, four Titans and I grab the pinion, see if it wobble and see how loose it was. And finally I got it. So I'm going to take that brace off, uh, tap the pinion, move it around a few times and recheck my uh, preload. I'm telling you right now, I just got that pinion crushed. That crush leave, you need a fucking breaker bar and a snipe. I couldn't use my torque wrench in there because of the lack of availability with space because things so fucking long. It needs such a big reach in order to make it click. But even using a snipe, you gotta use superhuman retard strength to fucking crush that bitch. And once it starts to crush, it crushes very fast. So you gotta like be very careful because I'm right at my max scale, like 40 inch pounds, which is the maximum. And um, I'll see what's gonna happen. If it, I just have to monitor it and see if it gets too hot. If it gets too hot, I'll have to fucking redo it all. But uh, it's a lot of fucking work, I'm telling you. It's almost beer time, but I want to get that carrier in. Before I check my gear pattern, I got to make sure my pinion and differential preload's the same. So my pinion was at the high end, like 40, 41. And to turn the differential, you need another 7 to 11. So it should be like 47 inch pounds. Yeah, right, like 47, 46. So I'm going to check my backlash now and then check my gear pattern. 
So my backlash is right at the maximum, 0 .008. So everything's good, my preload's good, this is good. I'm gonna remark my gear pattern and check it. If that turns out good, we're calling it a day. There's my coast pattern. That's my drive pattern. I'm gonna roll with that and call it good. It's fucking beer time. That carrier's in. I did what I wanted to do. Oh. Everything else is just gonna go in smoothly. The hardest part about setting up your carrier is uh, getting your shims in that right. I used a method that was in my uh, Jeep service manual. I'm gonna make it like a quick reference on how to do it because if you're using your old carrier and you're just putting gears in You really shouldn't have to change it all that much when you're using a brand new carrier and new gears You basically gotta find your find your spot by like scratch So there's a lot of fucking around in the end I had to add point zero zero three shims to my ring gear side in order to get the proper preload on the carrier bearings and the proper preload on the to get the proper turning so that wasn't too bad of a deal like I got that special puller to pull the uh, bearings off of the carrier so it was simple just to pull them on and, and then press them back on so doing gears is something you definitely want to have the right tools to do this job Ex especially crushing that fucking pinion sleeve Jesus Christ that thing's fucking hard man I was using like all my weight and I'm a big guy just to fucking get that nut to fucking turn but once it starts to crush it crushes fast so you really have to watch because once it starts to give and you'll know it it's like really hard to fucking do it then all of a sudden it starts to give and it starts getting a little soft but then you got to keep checking it and then once you figure you got enough you got to leg measure it see how many inch pounds you got on it and are and then go back and then crush it just slightly because even just a even just one click on your wrench is a lot like um i technically should have used I should have torqued it, but with limited space, you really would need like a hoist or something to use that big fucking wrench I got because that torque wrench is like four fucking feet tall, and I mean it's got like a like a big gear in it. So in order to get one fucking click, you got to move it a lot. With the space I had, just wasn't able to work. So, and I'm actually pretty surprised that that ratchet did not break. It it fucking it was it was a lot of work. But anyways, um, I'm gonna end my weekend video at that. It's fucking beer time. Um, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Jeep videos are going to start coming soon, probably within two weeks. So I'll talk to you guys later.